Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Well, as they, we have been really on the ball this week with the old Suffer. Now, as you can see now, we are nicely painted up and we're coming together and we've got the exhaust system fitted on there. At the moment, it's only a loose fit because I don't want to airbrush it as we go through with other things. So really up next for this one is Declan and going around and painting all the little bits all over this and really bringing it together. All the prep work's done, the weapons are done, the pylons are done and everything else. So by this time next week, we should have a completed supper to do. So anyway, to keep up with everything, because I'm building quite quick at this one at the moment, you've got part seven and eight are up on the site. Now part seven, which you'll see in a minute, is a little bit of an intro into it because I think other members might find it interesting about prep work for spring brain as you'll see basically that covers um, as we say all the sort of the preppy type bits of the model and things like that and then part eight is really on you know getting ready for the first type of camo patterns and everything in parts nine will cover all the camo work and things like that so that will actually be up next week and then obviously um, there's a lot of time where I'm doing things off camera ie putting in obviously the electric sorting out the things for that uh, because all the wirings have to be cut and fed through which is on the underside but as you can see it's really coming together now so I'd say you've got an hour's worth up today. It's in two 30 minute parts, but they're quite interesting because I say we talk about various ways of, you know, getting the paintwork all ready and things like that. So to keep up with that, here's a little look of how this started out. Okay, so here we are. We're in our sort of improv uh, spray area. Now, as I said before, I've got a spray bay just down here, okay? And usually I can get sort of a small uh, 130 second aircraft into it, or certainly 148s and things like that. But because of this one, and I want to show you exactly what we're doing, um, I've decided to do it right here. Now, we're gonna have to talk about it. Bit of health and safety here. On a kit this size, especially when you're doing a lot of spray work, we're gonna get a lot going airborne, okay? Even though these are acrylics and not as nasty as obviously you using enamels or lacquer based and things like that, they're still pretty nasty, especially in a confined space, especially if you haven't got ventilation. So a mask is a bit of a must. Now, as I said, you can spend a fortune on mask or you can do it relatively cheap. This one is quite a cheap one in all honesty. It's got one air filter. I don't know much about it, if I'm honest, but uh, it does do the trick and I use it mainly for doing resin. As I said, I've got a Graphic Air, um, very large uh, extractor over here, which they've got an exhaust system, which goes around and then goes basically out the window over the side. Okay, now the thing is that does draw out probably 90% of here. If you haven't, for goodness sake, make sure you're in a very well ventilated area, okay? And you've got plenty of windows open and a door with a, uh, a through draft. Just don't open a window. You need to get the uh, through draft uh, sort of going. If it's warm where you are, perhaps it's better to spray outdoors. For the purpose of doing this one, um, I've got a Harder and Steenbeck uh, Evolution airbrush. This is um, a dual action airbrush. It's gravity fed because obviously it comes from the top going down. Dual action basically means air, you push down, I want to point it at me whilst it push down gives you air, you pull back, it gives you your paint. Between the two, you can have a nice balance. This particular airbrush comes with a standard 0.2 millimeter needle on it, very fine, good enough for doing camo work and quite broad areas, as you're going to see in a moment when we start doing big areas of paint, especially the grey underneath. I'm going to be using acrylic paints, um, and to be honest, I'm going to be using the Guns range. These are the acrylic ones that they do because, well, quite frankly, the only ones who do decent uh, Israeli colours in them. Uh, and for the purposes of it, I'm going to be using Tamiya uh, X20A acrylics. Now, my compressor I've got down the bottom is basically it's a two litre, got a tank on it as well, so I can spray without it kicking in, although you will notice as soon as I start spraying, you know, it's going to make a bit of a racket anyway. So anyway, to start with, I'm just going to use some Tamiya black, flat black. Now, this is what we spoke about when we were masking up this canopy area, okay? All we're going to do is spray check our flows coming through okay we're just going to spray the canopy now the reason for this is it's so from the inside it shows through black okay so it doesn't have to be a precise job but what we're going to do is make sure you've covered it all properly so it does show black the other thing this does very nicely will give you a black line running around the inside and it works quite well okay so let's do this side as well. Up. Okay, now as you've got the black paint out, you might want to check some little areas where you're not quite sure about how it's actually, the joins are and things like that. In my case, the only one I'm slightly concerned about is the nose. 
Now I know we're obviously going to go around and do this in priming, so we'll be able to have a look. But I want to just pop around now and see how it looks because it was a had to have a bit of a sand job but by looking at it when it's slightly wet even now you can see it's a good one you don't have to worry about it but if it was a problem I could literally let that dry sand it do whatever okay so we're going to do the same with a few other things we're just going to check the wing joints to see how they look really with some paint on it we'll do both of those because that's the only other area I'm slightly concerned about and then what I'm going to do is same on the underside this is all going to be lost, don't worry about any of this because it's going to be lost. But what you can do is you can check it. If it doesn't look right, if you sand it, you can see exactly where you are because of the black areas you've done on it. But quite frankly, we're very happy how they've turned out, all of them. Okay, so we're going to let this dry off just for a moment and then we're going to get some uh, primer together. Now primer, again, you could literally go off and buy a can of primer. Most of the manufacturers, hobby ones, um, you know, I'm thinking here, Tamiya, guns, things like that, do a actual primer. You can buy and spray it on. Comes in a rattle can and you can spray it all over it. Yeah, that's great, I don't mind doing it, but I tend to find rattle cans go everywhere, absolutely everywhere, so I prefer to use the airbrush, again, purely because I can get it in and out of the room. What I tend to do is literally pick a neutral color, i.e. a gray, something light, I have been known even to prime up in green and things like that in the past, but literally something like, if we take, what we've got a lot of, and I'm literally just looking to see what we've got a lot of, but a type of grey. Quick tip here, if you ever get a top, won't come off, guns do this set, okay? It's two rings. One ring fits perfectly over Tamiya bottles, as in this, and the rubber one you sit underneath and it just grips everything, and it is so much easier for getting tops off, okay? And you can have a look, and I haven't got much in there, so we won't bother with that. Okay, we'll pick another one. But also, the great thing about it is, if you take it over to the Mr. Hobby range, the smaller end, he says, I've got the wrong one on. Yeah, sorry, wrong end on. Does these. Okay, so that's the top, top of that one. Although it's left the bottom in. All right, and then the other great thing about them is, if you've got their metalizer range with these flat tops, got a little T-section in there, it sits on the top like that and unscrew it, okay, and that undoes those caps. So instead of doing it the old way of tearing up the inside of your hand and everything else, these for five pounds, bargain. Well worth the investment. Anyway, I digress. So we're letting that dry. So what we're trying to do now is find some gray we just see what we've got a lot of. I seem to have a lot of this. This will do. We're using uh, XF22, which is actually German grey, RLM grey. Okay. So what we do, we give this a good old shake, because I haven't used it for absolute ages. Again, it just shows it's stuck. But I tell you what, it's a great tool for this. It's one of those ones, whoever invented it needs a pat on the back. Now, I haven't got much in here, and it's very old. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take 5 mil of thinners. I'm going to pop probably just a tiny bit more, 6 mil of thinners into this. Okay, then I've got a mixing brush just down here, and we're just going to mix it in the bottle, because I'm going to use all of this on this lot. Okay. Just give this a run. And this is great for getting rid of old paint like this, you know, because you can have bottles of paint that kick around your desk because we've all got them and you open them up and they're absolutely horrible. So you might as well use them up. Okay, so we just give that a good old mix. So we've got plenty of lumps in this, which isn't the best thing. So if you have got loads of lumps in your paintwork, just like this, this is a little thing I did in a show a while ago. I did a a quick intro show. Keep mixing, we'll get rid of obviously a lot of it, but what you can do, you can make up something like this. Now this is literally a plastic bottle, it's one of my, the wash bottles, okay, I've cut off the end, and we've just got a piece of tight, or stocking around it, okay, and then literally all we've got is a rubber band holding it on. Then before we put it into our paintbrush, we will filter it. Now the great thing I like about these because it fits very nicely into the top of a uh, colour cup. So we've got a little bit of black paint in here so we're just going to blow it out and get rid of it all. 
I'm not even going to worry about colour change or anything like that because we won't be around long enough to know about it. So we just give it a scrub. So we'll just hold that there and then what we'll do, we'll just pour this straight in here. And hopefully what that will do is catch all the nasties in the sieve bit. We'll just pop that out of the way. And there it goes, it sits on there like this. Should have thought about this really and had some more bits ready. Okay, so in here we've got about two mil sat in. Just gonna blow the black out and we come through to this color. And then what we'll do, just for the moment, just making sure we didn't put a fingerprint in there. We will start on the underside. So what I'm going to do, just pop this in here. And just for the minute, so I walk you through it, I'll do it without anything running. So what we're gonna do, we've checked our flow, we're quite happy how it is. I'm shooting this at around about 35 PSI, so a nice high air pressure. And we are literally putting on a dusty coat quite a thin one and just walking it across okay we're not worried about getting in here too much at the moment in detail because literally this is a primer the purpose of a primer two things firstly it's going to show up anything that's wrong if you've got any lines joints glue marks anything else if you can see it now you're going to see it later on so it's well worth taking care of it now second thing it'll do it'll make your next coat of paint grip to it far far easier so what we do we just walk this everywhere on the model so we're all going to turn a nice shade of green okay and cover up that black that we had on there as well and obviously all of those paints we had on the go you know that were used for checking seam lines or filler and things like that they're all go now as well now the engine, you might notice, I haven't masked that, that's because I'm going to shoot it from behind like this. Okay, and we're just going to walk this up. Make sure you get in all the areas, okay. But say, don't worry about it too much, it's literally a primer. Alright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish off priming the rest of it. I'm also going to do all the tanks and the pylons you can see up here, all with primers, so we're sat in there. So now I can get the extractor on, the window open, and away we go. Okay, so we say, members, you can now go off, just click down the bottom, we'll go through the normal way, um, or you can shortcut it through the forum to get to that build, and obviously it's in a higher res than the one you've just seen as well. So if for those of you wondering about the differences between Facebook and that, our own server, we've got them up there at uh, the bit rate of 4,500, uh, which is, you know, very, very clear, sharper, sharper than it is on here, even with, you know, full screens and all the rest of it. Um, so there we go. The other thing we need to talk about, because we're getting a bit close to it now, so I'm sort of getting things ready as well, is Scale Model World. Now this is the world's, I think they, they banner it as being the world's best model show and all the rest of it, certainly the largest I think, because um, obviously a lot of the European guys come over for it as well. Um, so that is on. Now Hans is coming flying in from the US again, so good lad on him, he's coming up. Marcus is going to be there, we're not sure about the other members of the team yet, we're trying to finalise details for travel to see if they can make it or not, but we'll certainly be there. Um, we're in Hall 2, which is the middle hall as you come in you've got the um cafe bit if it's the same as last year and then you've obviously got the static spitfire is going to be in there i do believe the competition area as you go into the next hall we are on the left hand side down there but we're going to have a big banner up and everything else so you can come and find us um, members if you make yourself known to us there will be a little goodie bag for you which i've just put together so um, as i say make yourself known with your your name and everything else like that and come and have a chat i've got everybody a little goodie bag um, with some little bits and pieces in nothing exciting don't go overboard with it but it's got stickers and various things in it so please come and say hello to us. Obviously Mel's going to be there as well, which no doubt should be in charge of money or something like that. Um, anyway, so that's going to be on the, I think, 11th and 12th, or was it 12th and 13th? Um, somewhere like that. Yeah, 11th and 12th, I think it is, of November. If you haven't been before, it's one of those shows where, you know, you can really get away of not going to any others, but this one is a bit of a must because, you know, often, often only are we there flogging all our bits as well because obviously the wash will be valuable, the pigments, and obviously all the sanders and DVDs and everything else we do. But all the major manufacturers will be there from the small market. And obviously Revel have a stand there, Airfix definitely 
definitely have one there. I do believe Hobby Boss are in there. Is it Hobby Boss? Somebody else are in there this year. But you've got the other companies as well, like Models for Sale are going to be in there. Um, and I presume all the resin guys, the decal guys as well, uh, Model Alliance Tories there and their team. So if you ever you know want to ask questions to the manufacturers and that, now's your chance to do it because literally we're all under one roof and can, you know you can go around and pick up all the goodies. And a lot of the guys do special prices at the show. So if you haven't been before, it is well worth the entry fee. I know it's not cheap, but it is really well worth it. And as I say, come and have a chat with us and we're going to have our TV up with various things playing and all things like that. So come and have a uh, great couple of days at the show. Um, we spoke about it before, but we are staying locally in a local hotel as well. So members, it's all on the site. Just pop along to the, the in the forum uh, and it says which hotel we're staying in and uh, where we're going to be in the evening as well if you want to join us for a dinner and drink and everything else like that. Anyway, the other great thing is Ant has done a review on Art Models um, Hurricane. This is the 148. Now, the recessed panel lines, all the rest of it, it really does look good. And it's got loads of close-up photos. So it's an inbox review. It's not a build review. It's just an inbox review. Go and have a look at that and see what he thinks about it. So you can get on that just down below here, unless you're watching this somewhere else. But it's on the, the, the actual news page of the site. It's just below here. And you can see it. If not, it's in the review section uh, as well on the main site. Things are coming to a head as well. We're getting obviously very close to Telford and things like that. So a lot of things are ending as well. Now the Allied World War II armoured fighting vehicle, tanks, um, that one comes to an end on the 6th of November. So you've just got over a week. I think that's next Sunday uh, off the top of my head. Um, so you haven't got long to on that one. Get your entries in guys. Um, some great builds coming along there. And I'll do a video for it and everything else because I'll have a bit more time then. Um, so at the same time, we've only got, I think it's going to be about a week after that, uh, I haven't written down when it ends, but the Swedish uh, group build I think ends about two, you know, a week after that as well. So you've got about three weeks now um, until the Swedish one ends as well. So time to get you, no, so we've got some great builds on that and we're going to bring them to you in photo build section onto the main site as well. It's a little something we're working out. Um, these things will happen after Telford. Uh, we're going to have a major re -in, redo the site. I've said it before and it is there, but it isn't switched on yet. What I'm also going to be doing is betting better categories for the full uh, builds that we've done. So obviously not just mine as well, everybody on the forum, the ones that we take out into the main one, which we'd like to take a lot more of you uh, out into the main site, we're gonna actually have a photo build area with thumbnails where you work and then we're gonna categorize them into groups. So obviously certain types of aircraft um, and things like that. So you can click on that, everyone's full builds in there, just like you get in the magazines um, and they'll be available like that. And there's gonna be hundreds I think at the end of this once we get it all sorted. So it'll be a great resource for everybody. Um, um, to get in there and do things like that. So this week, I'm going to, or next week I should say, I will be carrying on with the suffer. We're going to be getting this one finished and everything else. Now the stand for this one, as I said, Marcus is working on that. Not only has he done the electrics for this one, for me to plug in, um, but also he's going to be doing the stand, because don't forget, this one is going to be on display and it will look something like that, as if it's coming into land, hence why we've got air brakes open, although they're just a loose fit at the moment. So we're going to get this one all finished off tomorrow, looking really, really good and everything else like that. And then hopefully what will happen is, just for the actual show itself, we will actually get it up on its stand and everything else so if you are coming to Telford to the show for the Nationals then you'll be able to see this one in the flesh doing its bit not only myself obviously I'm going to have a lot of the builds you've probably seen here um, which will be at the show as well we're going to have a big display with all our work as well obviously the team will bring theirs along uh, any members if you want to bring models along and you want to put them on the table have a yak with us first and we'll make sure we get some room for you to get them on there and things like that because we're going to have them stepped up and things I don't know big plans for it all but um, we'll see a bit closer to the time until next week everybody happy modeling and I'll see you next week